Hi guys. Recently we've been looking at how to draw and how to name alcohols and we've also looked at classifying and the properties of alcohols. Now one of the biggest properties of alcohols is its combustibility and we are going to be looking at enthalpy of combustion today. So working out how much energy is released when we burn alcohols. Today we are going to start with the theory behind this, therefore we're going to be writing some combustion equations. We did a little bit of this last year so it will be some revision. So, alcohols combust in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Combustion equations can be written and balanced for these reactions. So, in your notes, in your notebooklets, there is not space um, to do this because it is revision from last year. So, what I want you to do is, in your notes, Jota, can you please put the heading combustion equations? And we're going to copy this example down. So, example one, write the combustion equation for the combustion of ethanol. Now, we have to be able to write the products of combustion of ethanol and also balance the equation. So I'm going to start by writing the formula for ethanol, which is C2H5OH. If you need to, you can also draw ethanol out to double check its molecular formula, but you do have the molecular formula for these alcohols in your um, pupil notes. So when we combust or when something combusts in a combustion reaction we are reacting it with oxygen which is o2 so the reactants here are ethanol and o2 our ethanol is burning in oxygen and our products are carbon dioxide and water now i'm not finished yet because i need to balance this equation so to balance equations we write the elements or the atoms involved in the equation underneath the arrow. And I'm going to count how many of each I have on both sides. So on the left hand side, I have two carbons. And on the right hand side, I have one carbon, two carbons, one carbon. On the, for hydrogens on the left hand side, I have six carbons, five here, one here. Sorry, six hydrogens, five and one. And on the right hand side, I have two hydrogens. And then for oxygen on the right hand side, I have one here and two here, so three. And on the right hand side, I have two oxygens here and one here, so three. We always balance combustion equations by balancing carbon first and then hydrogen and then oxygen. So in order to balance out my carbons, I need to have another two on the right hand side. So I'm going to put a big two here and adjust my count now. I now have two carbons on the right hand side and two on the left hand side. So that is balanced. However, doing that, putting that two at the front of my carbon dioxide has changed my number of oxygens. So I now have four. So two times two is four plus the one that's in water. So I have five on the right hand side. The next thing I'm going to balance is my hydrogens. I have six on the left and two on the right. So I need to put a three here. So now I have six hydrogens and my hydrogens are balanced. But that again changes my oxygen. So I now have four oxygens plus the three in water is seven. So in order to balance my oxygens on the left, because I have seven on the right and three on the left, I want to put a 3 in front of my O2, which will make 6, plus the 1, which is in the ethanol, makes 7. So this is now my completed combustion equation for the combustion of ethanol. Example 2 asked me to write the combustion equation for butanol. So I can draw out butanol first of all. C4. So I have C4H9OH. I'm reacting it with oxygen for a combustion reaction, producing CO2 and H2O. I count how many carbons, hydrogens and oxygens I have on both sides. One carbon on the right, four on the left, 
9, 10 hydrogens on the left, 2 on the right, oxygens, 1, 2, 3 on the left, 2, 3 on the right. And now I can start balancing my equation, starting with carbon. I've got 4 on the left, so I need 4 here to have 4 on the right. It's changed my oxygens, I now have 8 oxygens in my CO2 by times in 4 and 2. And 1 here, so for a total of 9. Balancing my hydrogens, I have 10 on the left, and so I need a 5 here. 5 times 2 is 10, to get 10 on the right. That's also changed my oxygens. I now have 5 oxygens here, 1 times 5. And over here, I have 2 times 4, which is 8. So in total, I have 13 oxygens on my right. So to balance my oxygens then, I need to have 12 from my oxygen on its own, plus this one is 13. So I put a 6 in front of my O2, which now makes this 13. Carbon's balanced, hydrogen's balanced, and oxygen is balanced. So as I've mentioned previously, alcohols are a very efficient fuel source, which means they burn to produce high amounts of energy in an exothermic reaction. The enthalpy change associated with that reaction can be calculated using EH equals CM delta T. Now this will be an equation which is um, this will be an equation which is very familiar for a lot of you. We looked at this equation in National Five level. The only difference this year is that there is an extra step at the end of the reaction, and we'll talk about that a bit later on. So, if we're looking at this equation, our EH stands for the quantity of heat energy released. C is a constant and it is 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram per degree and it is the heat capacity of water. M is the mass of water. in kilograms, and sorry, heat energy is in kilojoules, and delta T is the difference in temperature, measured in degrees C. I get the definition for enthalpy of combustion is a definition that you have to know. And the definition is the enthalpy of combustion of a substance is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance burns completely in oxygen. So when we're looking at enthalpy changes, we're specifically looking at one mole of a substance. When you come into class um, next week, we will be going over um, the experiment for enthalpy of combustion. You will be carrying this out and that is when we will start to do the calculation. So you will use your own results to calculate enthalpy of combustion along with some practice questions. All right.